my work is to go and service our toilets in the community. Yeah. One of the hardest things about starting a sanitation company is this perception of poop. Nobody likes to talk about it. Some argue it's why, in terms of the sustainable development goals, sanitation is the furthest behind. Solving the sanitation challenge in cities will require more than just sewers. We need to be open to taking on this challenge through a combination of sewered and non-sewered approaches. The history of sanitation interventions has very much been building a toilet and stopping there. A toilet without waste treatment is just a way to displace the problem. So what we set out to do was not only build toilets, we have waste collectors take the waste out of the community to a centralized facility where we're then processing it into valuable end products. This problem of sanitation is a huge global problem. It's a tremendous problem throughout Haiti. And right now, soil is focused on Port-au-Prince and Cap Haitian. It's less than 35% who have access to a toilet. A lot of people who work in development have this assumption that when there's a greater need, there will be a greater willingness to work voluntarily. It's actually just the opposite. The greater the need, the less time you have to be cleaning up someone else's poop. You need to have some form of livelihood creation which allows the person responsible for it to make a living doing it. Soil came up with this program, Echo Lakai. And Echo Lakai is a household toilet program where they pay a small monthly fee which is between four and five dollars US per month. People have a small in-home toilet that basically has a five-gallon bucket in it where the poop falls. And each time you poop, instead of flushing with water, which is such a valuable resource, we use some sort of a dry carbon cover material. So this would be some sort of agricultural waste. That keeps the smells from coming out and it keeps the flies from, from coming in. Each week we have service agents who come to the households, they, they pick up a full bucket and they give a clean bucket with that, with that flushing material in it. And then those full buckets are transported to one of soil's composting sites. We dump the poop into these bins. These microbes suddenly find themselves in an ideal environment. And as they reproduce and there's more and more of them, this waste starts to naturally heat up from their activity. They take care of that treatment process. The decomposition is ongoing, and after about six months, we have a, a finished product, which is just this beautiful, rich soil. In our 10th year, we're really trying to spin off some of this implementation to the private sector so that in the next five years, in the next 10 years, there can be independent sanitation providers in Haiti. In Naivasha, it's a rapidly urbanizing community. Currently, there are about 250,000 people living here. Over 90% of the waste is not disposed safely. So when Sanivation started, I think a lot of ministries didn't know what to do with us. One thing that has been really helpful is working with local ministries to help navigate and how we integrate ourselves into the institutional environment. The public sector and the private sector needs each other. These are like twins. Either of them cannot work alone. And we as a company, we are really reaching out to the public sector so that we can help them meet their goals. Over the years, we believe we've developed a technology and also a team of experts that can provide the services to the municipalities, especially the non-seward. And now we are coming up with business model of solving the non-seward problem. And so, twice a week, these containers are collected and brought to our local waste processing site. So we actually use solar energy to treat and transform feces into a charcoal briquette.
And so how it works is we actually concentrate solar energy onto a working fluid. And that working fluid works through a heat exchanger to heat feces up over 90 degrees Celsius. At that point, not only does it treat the feces, um, but it transforms it into a binder so that it dries nice and hard in our final briquettes. And this is our final product. It burns twice as long as local charcoal, has about a third the emissions, and so we sell it in big 50 kilogram sacks to local businesses here in the area. We went for a franchise model because one, the franchisees would have access to land, which we knew would be a big challenge in informal settlements. And two, there is no better signal to the rest of the community that this is a solution that they should be paying attention to than having their fellow community members be the ones who invest in the solution. There hasn't been many great ideas in terms of getting facilities close to where people are living. People have to walk long distances to access them, or they're seeing pits and hanging toilets where the waste is just clearly staying in the community. What we do is we build low-cost toilets called Fresh Life. Residents are able to invest either to run it as a commercial enterprise where they charge people to use the toilets, or landlords can provide it to their tenants as a value-add service, or public institutions like schools provide it to their students. We then work with those operators, regardless of the franchise model, to ensure that the facilities stay clean, safe, and open. We collect the waste regularly, uh, pretty much on a daily basis, although it depends on usage. It's then taken to a processing plant in a neighboring county, and there we're able to process the waste professionally and safely into organic fertilizer and then animal feed. So we're raising a colony of black soldier flies. Now these flies eat organic matter, including sanitation waste and ag waste and things like that. We then harvest them, boil them and dry them, and the end product is 50% protein. We then sell this on to feed millers who then make their own specialty mixes. Sanergy is 240 people strong uh, in an area with 40% unemployment, and that doesn't even include our operators, of which there's over 500 of them too. Ecological sanitation is a job that not only can you make a livelihood doing it, but you can feel very proud to be a part of restoration. It's only recently that counties are really realizing how much more cost-effective non-sewered sanitation services can be and how the provision of non-sewered sanitation services can help meet their goals. Sanitation is a public good and this is a solution that works in complement with sewers to be able to reach 100% coverage in cities in the developing world.